sé muy pocas palabras en español. And that was all of them. Um, <laughs> fortunately, uh, for everybody here today, I do, however, speak an international language, uh, a language that needs no translation. And like most people, uh, I use my voice to convey this language. But unlike most people, I use it in a very different way. <laughs> talking about the international language of music. Thank you. All right. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, is this thing on? Yes. All right. Uh, and as a beatboxer, my name is Tom Thumb, as a beatboxer. <laughs> but um, as a beatboxer, when I perform, I use my voice and my voice alone to recreate a whole lot of different sounds and a whole lot of different instruments. Um, <clears throat> such, uh, let's say, we start with a guitar, something like this. <laughs> and then maybe we do a wooden flute or something like that. <laughs> Or a didgeridoo. A sitar. Or maybe even an 8-bit synthesizer. <clears throat> And that is exactly how I use my voice. Use my voice. And uh, when I use my voice in combination with this looping and layering, looping and layering, looping and layering, looping and layering technology, uh, it becomes a very important composition tool. And it also helps me stretch uh, the limits of my vocal range. For example, going from the lowest notes I can reach, like a <laughs> to the highest notes I can reach, like Um, <laughs> so I'm going to give you guys an example, and just to let you know that there's no effects on my voice whatsoever, except for a tiny little bit of reverb. And this is how it starts. <clears throat> Very shortly, how it starts. Yeah. <clears throat>
Um, I guess it's important for me to often start with a bit of a musical piece because it demonstrates to people that might not already know um, what, the, what the voice is capable, its infinite potential as an instrument, or in my case, uh, an array of instruments. Because a lot of people take beatboxing and they put it in this novelty box, you know, like a bit of a gimmick or a glorified party trick. Um, and I guess sometimes I myself am a bit of a perpetrator of this stereotype because I like to make a whole lot of stupid videos and I like to have a bit of fun with it. Um, but sometimes it's, well, actually most of the time, it's all the stupid videos that I post that seem to overshadow the serious body of my work, like all the stuff I pour my creative energy into. I'm going to give you guys an example. Um, last week, I put up a video on my social media <clears throat> in which I did this. Don't try this at music class. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I did that, and it literally took me 30 seconds to do. You know, all I did was stick a whistle in my nose and an iPhone in my face, and I put it online. And uh, it got like 65,000 likes, which is 65 times more than my most successful creative post. Um, and it's great because people really seem to enjoy it. But at times, for me, it was frustrating because about two months before that, I put out another video in which I spent ages on. Um, I was watching the BBC Life documentaries that are narrated by David Attenborough. And this one in particular I was watching was about the life of insects. And when I was watching it, I got, I got really inspired because I noticed all the insects had all these like... <laughs> mechanical properties and uh, it, it was amazing for me and it inspired me to take a chunk of this footage and re-edit it and uh, reinterpret and make it my own and I gave it my own soundtrack. I put like layers upon layers of vocal sounds and gave it this new life um, and when I put it online <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was a bit of a minor fanfare. Um, it was like a handful of likes and one share from my mum to my dad or something like that. It was, uh, but, you know, I was a bit disappointed because I was so proud of it and it took me so long. So now that I have this captive audience here in front of me, I'm going to force it into your eyes and into your ears and I'm going to accompany it with this microphone right now. <clears throat> this is called The Machine. Thank you. 
Gracias. Yay, real world likes. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, what was I going to talk about? It was a very potent topic that he was about to raise, but he sat there in amazement, staring at their blank faces while he looked for what he was about to say. All right. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, okay, so I realise that some people might not have, you know, really dug that concept. It's about as niche as you can get, really, marrying uh, a weird clip of weird insects with a weird 28-year-old man making strange noises. Um, <laughs> but that's cool because I realise most of my ideas are pretty out of the, out of the box, out of the sphere of normality. And... Uh, a lot of people often ask me where I get my ideas from, how I come up with these things. And uh, a lot of the things that I come up, come up with, a lot of the noises that I have, are kind of things that I subconsciously absorb in day-to-day -day life, you know, hearing the things around me like... Uh, things like that. But a lot of the time, I concentrate really hard on learning new things, and I pick up a whole lot of stuff from uh, different countries and cultures that I visit. Uh, for example, the other day, I was trying to teach myself some um, Middle Eastern scales. <coughs> picked up some instruments in Scotland. Oh, that's a bit blasphemous. Um, I picked up bass lines from London. And uh, I've even picked up some sounds while I've been here in uh, Latin America and the Caribbean. Um, so I'd like to finish my performance today with a bit of a reggae kind of Latin dubby calypso inspired cover of a song, a very popular song that I believe sums up my, my life to a T right now. And this is how it starts.
<laughs> Thank you. I hope you guys like me scratching the surface of my vocal abilities, but more importantly, I hope it's opened up your mind to the possibilities of what can be achieved with only the human voice. Thank you.